how are we to uh, eliminate the human unconscious and come into our birthright as fully conscious enlightened beings? What is to be done? Again, my opinion is that what we need to do is to concentrate on the phenomenon of communication and the evolution of language. We have been far too naive about the role that language has played in the construction of reality at its center, let alone off on the fringes with the elves and the fairies and the UFOs. We need to test the envelope of language. We need to perfect the fine idea of being able to communicate with each other. At the moment, and I think we proved it at this conference, it's nothing more than a fine idea. I felt before I came to this meeting that we would all sit down in a room and make great progress in about an hour toward understanding the phenomenon. And then I discovered that we were all, including myself, heavily freighted with linguistic momentum. The power of our own metaphors to carry us past the opportunity to listen to what other people were saying. And so I think that what we are dreaming of is a common language. And what the saucers are attempting to teach is the modality of a linguistic transformation in the direction of a kind of communication that is not dependent on culturally sanctioned dictionaries, but that is in the bones, in the neurons, in the synapses, so that the ambiguity which attends all our discussions about reality will be purged from our worldview. This is the essence of falling in love. One definition of falling in love is nothing more than lifting the veils of misconception between two entities and still being able to go forward toward some kind of union. So I really believe that we have moved so far from an awareness of the feminine portion of our psyche that now the thing dearest to us and closest to us must present itself in consciousness under the guise of an extraterrestrial or interdimensional invader. It's a comment on the alienation of our era and the way this schism can be breached, the way this psychic wound can be healed and a kind of species-wide individuality emerge is through taking control, conscious control of the evolution of language. This means paying a great deal more attention to what we say to each other, to linguistic intent. I think that the main legacy of the 1960s into the 80s was a legacy of language transformed in the direction of feeling. To me, the most shocking part of the male dominance of our worldview is the paucity in our language of terms that convey emotion. We have 500 words for uh, the components of a steering mechanism. We have five words for emotion. Each one of us is a swim in a concatenation of emotionally subtle wave phenomena that come and go just below the surface of our awareness. But if any one of us turns to another and says, how are you doing? The answer is fine, fine, yourself. <laughs> this is presenting a tremendous barrier to us to the expression of our wholeness. And I'm completely uh, willing to line up behind Carl Jung on the notion that the UFO is an expression of our longing for wholeness. In principio et verbum, et verbo caro factum est. In the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh. In other words, if you were an actual extraterrestrial, standing off in a spaceship, looking down on this planet, you would not see the strivings of individual species. You would not even see the great classes of uh, organized organic life. What you would see instead is a gene swarm, a language frenzy, the coding of meaning in genes, in words, 
in architectonic production, in poetry. What is happening on this planet is the self-reflecting uh, genesis of communication for itself. It is language somehow that is loose in our species, on our planet, within and without the flying saucers. So communication, which we take astonishingly for granted considering the very basic kinds of needs that we communicate to each other, is actually the great frontier of our spiritual becoming. It seems to have passed right by us that we already possess a form of telepathy. That the, the miracle of communication involves the fact that I make small mouth noises and you instantaneously consult the culturally sanctioned uh, dictionary and out of your dictionary you construct a map of my linguistic intent and then through a series of grunts and nods we assure each other that we know what we mean. So, in a sense, the, I said this afternoon that the UFO was here to confound us, to confound science. On another level, like the psychedelics, it is here to catalyze a finer evolution of communication, to goose us toward a little tighter epistemic an ontological uh, definition of the business of communicating with each other. If we could refine our channels of communication, we would coalesce into the kind of omnipotent, uh, extra-worldly organism that we anticipate in our vision of the flying saucer. So I think really the flying saucer has become the guiding image of our own cultural evolution. We are going to live in the imagination. This planet is involved in a birth process. There is nothing unnatural about what is going on on this planet, and there is nothing unnatural or inappropriate about us. It's simply that the planet has carried us to term. We are now ready to leave the womb and the womb is da in danger of uh, toxemia if we in fact do not leave it. We have passed into a new kind of time where the separation of our species from the planet that gave us birth is a necessity for the survival of both parties. And like any birth, it is a moment of crisis. It can end in catastrophe and perhaps the saucers stand off to perform a necessary caesarean if things really turn into chaos. Many contactees report an apocalyptic scenario involving the saucers taking everybody away in the wake or in the eminence eminent of a thermonuclear exchange. However, the mature way, the self-reflective way, the dignified way out of this cultural impasse, out of this global standoff, is for us to take seriously on a personal level the possibility of evolving our communications with each other so that we actually be become the loving family of the goddess, the planetary organism that we all feel ahead of us in the future casting an enormous shadow back over the historical landscape. Eventually, and when is up to us, it will no longer be a higher dimensional object throwing a shadow into the flat dimensions of history. It will be instead a transcendental object made manifest. We are, in fact, on the brink of great changes. Yes, the UFO phenomenon has been around for hundreds of thousands of years, possibly, but nevertheless, it is somehow spun in to the fate of our species, and the overwhelming image of self-transcendent flight, of return to a mandalic unity that transcends space and time, is the guiding archetype of our peregrination through history. So I believe that the UFO waits at the end of time in the same way that the individuated personality waits 
at the end of the ontological uh, development of the individual. And if we act in good conscience and with great faith in each other, we can in fact realize uh, the hope of the Irish prayer which says, may you be alive at the end of the world.